In this video, I chat in depth with Chris Stanley about his new book, The Adjuster's Resume Playbook, and how it can help you get noticed by hiring managers instead of getting lost in the shuffle, starting now. You're watching The Property IA Show. This video is sponsored by Kaplik. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. Get the free guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by the IA firm CCMS and Associates. To apply to this fast growing and innovative firm, email your resume and a compelling cover letter to careers at ccmsclaims.com. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. It's one of the best things that you can do to help adjust your TV. Okay, according to Wikipedia, the word resume comes from the French word resume, meaning summary. Leonardo da Vinci is credited with the first resume, although his resume takes the form of a letter written around 1481 to a potential employer, highlighting his considerable qualifications as an inventor of innovative technologies of war. For the next 450 years, the resume continued to be a mere description of a person and included their abilities and past employment. In the early 1900s, resumes listed things like height, weight, marital status, and religion. It was not until around 1950 that the resume evolved into something more than words written on scraps of paper. By then, resumes were considered very much mandatory and started to include information like personal interests and hobbies. It was not until the 1970s, the beginning of the digital age, believe it or not, that resumes took on a more professional look in terms of presentation and content. While it's still important to have a document that clearly lists what you've done and when you've done it, employers are also hiring based on who you are. After all, there are many people who have the same qualifications that you have. How else would you differentiate one candidate from another? Well, Chris Stanley, founder of IA Path, has collaborated with veteran adjuster and claims manager John Bachman, who has nearly two decades of experience in insurance, to create the definitive guide to building a resume for insurance work, whether you're an independent adjuster or even a staff adjuster. I got an advanced copy of their new book, The Adjuster's Resume Playbook, and then jumped on a Zoom call with Chris to have an in-depth discussion about what a resume really is, why it's so important, and how you can build a resume that will grab a hiring manager's attention and get you a call back on your application. But before we jump into that, I really wanna tell you about my friends over at CCMS and Associates. The adjusters that work there have called CCMS a big mom and pops firm because they really, really care about their adjusters. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a talented adjusting team, and they have a number of innovative and exciting roles, including dispute resolution work, daily and cat claims, and commercial and large loss. If you would like to become a part of the family, email your resume directly to careers at ccmsclaims.com. And here's my interview with Chris. So Chris... What is a resume? Uh, well, you know, Matt, if you'd asked me about five months ago, my answer is a little bit different than what it would be today. Five months ago, I would have said, well, that's where you put your work history. That's the right, right, Matt? That's where I put my work history. Right. But, but in reality, resume is nothing but an advertisement of you, the adjuster, to a potential employer. Yeah, so in simplest terms, it's basically just, uh, it's a little piece of marketing, basically, to, to say, hey, you know, you want to pick me, click on me, right? Yeah, exactly. We see it all the time on Amazon, we see it on Google, we see it in Walmart, we see advertisements everywhere. And the only time we as potential adjusters or, you know, employee candidates get an opportunity to kind of try to get in front of somebody and say, hey, you want to have another conversation with me is with a resume and it's a piece of paper or a digital representation of one that is supposed to lure people into a conversation with us. Okay. So that's so really, that's kind of the, the main reason why you need to have a great resume is because, you know, as somebody who's a hiring manager, they may see every day, they may get a stack of, you know, resumes in their inbox, whether that's on their desk or it's in their, in their email or whatever, and you need to be able to stand out. Right. Yeah, so depending what you're talking about, so if you're an adjuster looking to get a job at an insurance company and you imagine a job posting for, you know, I don't know, Abilene, Texas, you know, auto damage appraiser, adjuster job, whatever, 
that hiring manager for that position is going to see 250 resumes on average. Uh, if you're going for an IA firm, as much of us in those in the audience who probably are used to, it still is important because companies like Pilot Catastrophe get hundreds. In fact, I've heard whispers of around 1,200 resumes a month. Now, out of 1,200 resumes a month, where do you stack up against everybody else based on a digital representation of your paper? What is happening once you send your resume in? How are they cataloging you? And we don't know that. That's the scary part. We have no idea once we send a resume in what they think of us. What do they put in their notes in the back end about us? Oh, don't hire Matt. He's got a funky picture with the weird glasses or something. You know, like, what? We don't know, right? So what are you talking about? I'm, I'm just calling it. No. <laughs> but seriously, we just don't know. And so even in the independent adjusting world, I think we too often, I know I did up until five months ago, I completely dismissed resumes. It's not important to independent adjusters. That doesn't matter to us. And I was wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Cause it's, you know, traditionally, I think that you, you call, you apply, you get on the roster. And then when they finally get down to, you know, we, to you on the roster, then they put you to work. Right. It's, it's what it used to be like, but I don't, I don't really think it's like that anymore. Um, so when you're, when you're submitting a resume, um, traditionally, like in other industries, I mean, you might include like something like a cover letter. I mean, is that something that applies on our side? Well, where I got the information I do have learned about resumes isn't from my own head. Cause like I said, five months ago, I knew nothing about resumes and I went on this uh, hunt with John Bachman, a uh, good friend of mine an industry leader. And I said, we, we got to figure out how to help people get hired. Well, it's an independent adjusting firm or an insurance company. How do people get hired? How can we figure this out? And so we went and interviewed 10 hiring managers and recruiters for major insurance carriers who also do things the same way large IA firms do, same kind of systems and everything. And what they told us about cover letters was, I don't want a cover letter. Your resume needs to speak for itself. The only time a cover letter, only one person ever mentioned this, so I've got to share it. The only time a cover letter they felt was relevant was if you got a large uh, life event that made a big work gap history. Maybe you need to explain in a cover letter, hey, I was taking care of my uh, ill grandmother for two years. And that's why I was out of the workforce. But that way, maybe there's an explanation before you get to your resume. But the only time they said you should ever use a cover letter in that sense was if there's something major on your resume that needs explaining. And if you got one of those, you're kind of against the ropes anyways. So only those people should do it. The rest of them, they're like, your resume should stand on by itself and kind of inform us of who you are and what you can do for us. Okay. But if you're sending an email directly to a hiring manager for whatever reason, I mean, you probably want to put something in there. Oh yeah. Now one of the biggest pet peeves I've gotten from independent adjusting companies is when I put out a thing in my email or on LinkedIn, like, Hey, so-and-so needs positions filled, hit enter. All of a sudden people start emailing the guy tons of resumes and I'm like, send your resume too. And guess what they do? They send their resume too, but never say anything about who they are, where they're from, what kind of work they do. They just blank email with not even a signature. And they're like, uh, why am I getting this email? So yes, you can do a form of a cover letter in an email. I would recommend that. Yeah. So, I mean, so, and, and I do that as well. So occasionally we do job postings. If you put in the, cause I mean, these people already get bazillions of emails every day and they're probably, I mean, at you and me both, I mean, been working in this industry, a lot of people don't get to zero inbox every day, right? They may have like a running. Of course I do. What, what, <laughs> right? what are you talking about? So if zero, you send the zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Right. So if you send an email to somebody and you don't put anything in the email, then they're going to be like, what is this even for? Cause they have a, like, it's not like they're only just sitting there waiting for people to respond to the ad that I put out yeah. saying, Hey, email your resume to, to, to so-and-so. So what you do is, is you put in your res in your email, you say, you know, in the subject line, I would say, um, respond, responding to job posting for specific, 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 right? So that they know what like that Charles, is. Charles, Louisiana, hurricane deployment. Resume whatever. attached, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And then dear so-and-so, the person's name, because I'm going to give you the person's name when I do a job posting, uh, saw that you were looking for people in Lake Charles, Louisiana on Adjuster TV or on iPath and 
uh, wanted to submit my resume to you respectfully, you know, John Doe. Right? And I, that's all I really need to put. It's put something in there, like you said. I mean, yeah, it's got to be something. Yeah, read them. <laughs> Give some right. context. Come on. Like, blank emails with a resume show, then get deleted. I, at least if that's me, I'm like, you didn't take the time to tell me anything? Delete. Like, it's just there's too much guesswork at that point right. i don't know why you're contacting me and if they do have to reply to you to get that information that's a strike against you you're causing work not getting rid of work don't so. yeah your objective as as an as an independent adjuster who's looking for work is to reduce workloads on people right so and yeah. it, and once you do get deployed or you do you know you say you're doing daily claims or auto claim any kind of mm -hmm. claims and you're emailing somebody like you're emailing your manager which may be the person who's, who's doing the hiring in the first place they're still getting a million emails every single day, right? So in your emails that you send to, you may be sending a photo report, you just got off the phone with your manager and they said, send me over the photos, right? Don't just send a blank email with just the photos attached because then the guy's gonna be, in the 5,000 emails he's scrolling yeah. through. <laughs> what file in, does this go to? <laughs> exactly, you have to put yeah. in the, make it easy for him, make it easy for him to copy and paste the claim number into exact analysis, right? Put it in the subject line, put it in the body of the email, say, hey, we just got off the phone, um, we were talking about A, B, and C, and here are the photos related to that standing by Matt Allen, right? That's what I would say, right? Yep. And then that way, it's the it's same. It's kind of so, with email. It's, it is. If you're calling somebody, what are you going to do? You're kind of going to go, hey, this is Chris Stanley or Matt Allen or whatever. This, we, you told me to call you. Here's why. Um, so how do we move forward or whatever, right? But you yep. got to, there has to be that introduction phase anytime you're sending a document via email. But as far as submitting it through a portal, your resume should stand on its own. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. What are the biggest problems with most adjusters' resumes? I really hope you're getting some good information about building your resume from my discussion with Chris. Real quick, I wanted to take a second to tell you about my friends over at Kaplik. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. We are exposed to a lot of risks when we go to a property loss and climb on roofs and write estimates. What am I going to do when, not if, something goes wrong? I'm going to complete it. CPLIC or Kaplik for short is an insurance company for independent adjusters formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. Okay, back to my interview with Chris. Biggest problem with most adjusters resume is it's haphazardly put together the way mine was it's it's an afterthought it's here here's my work history i'm just throwing spaghetti basically against the wall and letting everybody else interpret my story through my work history um to be what interpreted the way they see it so if i send matt allen my work history which it's not that stellar for most of my career until adjusting right uh even if i hadn't been in adjusting at all Matt's going to go, well, this dude's a warehouse worker with no experience. He doesn't understand anything about claims. All it says is he's thrown boxes for a living. Why would I give this guy a shot, right? There, there's no context to your story, where you're coming from, where you're at, and where you're going. And so I think that's the biggest problem with resumes is simply you're letting people create a narrative around your resume, and you're not you, by just documenting facts rather than telling a story. Right, right. So, especially when you apply through a portal, you're gonna. Th it's gonna ask you on the, any application, really. It's gonna ask you your work history for the past five years, and it's like name, location, dates, work, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? If you just duplicate that on your resume, then why are you bothering to do a resume, right? And it's gonna ask right. you for a resume at the end. So you want to make sure that the resume is, like you said, it tells the story of who you are and what you can do for that company. Yeah, so that that's what I say is the the biggest problem is just not creating a narrative and story for people, and usually that starts with us not understanding our own story in a, in our own narrative. Yeah, and again, I mean, when you say it's story, it's like people think, oh, I got to write like you know a novel or whatever. It's like a three sentences can tell all the story that we need in a lot of cases, right? Well, if if you think about it, what let's think about something I would have put on a resume, you know. Uh, great at writing estimates, clear communication, full of integrity, blah, 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 all blah, blah, blahs there. None of that matters. Right. Like, okay, 
versus Xactimate level two certified property adjuster licensed in New York, Texas, Florida, and 27 other states or whatever. You can list them all out if you want. But just that sentence has put you in a league above its own versus an ambiguous thing about integrity or communication. What's the story? You know, with an extensive background in logistics, loss control, you know, on and on, like policy interpretation. And a lot of times what we found in interviewing these hiring managers was we have experience even before we get to adjusting with things that'll help us as adjusters. It's pulling those things out and realizing them ourselves that inside of our story are things that will make us a good adjuster. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So really, is that the biggest secret to creating a great resume? Well, the biggest secret I would say is that's the biggest thing that people mess up. But the biggest secret is those bullets that you put underneath your work history. So you got the profile summary or some people call it an executive summary at the top where it's like that licensed adjuster and blah, 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 blah. Right. And it's like this lump paragraph explaining kind of in, encapsulating who you are, but then you have the work history. So Matt's well, I worked at Liberty mutual insurance. Okay, Matt, were you a Joe Schmo at Liberty mutual? Were you a claims adjuster? Were you a top claims adjuster? Were you X, Y, Z? Like, if you just say, this is what I was, whatever their experience has been with the previous person of that type, that's who you are, right? So if you say, worked at CVS, oh, I had this CVS lady that just burned me to death and I don't like CVS employees, right? You're now that person they've met. They're creating their own narrative versus if you put something like a bullet under there that says, you know, um, I, we use an example in a, a book we just released about somebody works at a doctor's office. So you could say, hey, I worked at a doctor's office. I was the receptionist at a doctor's office. Well, cool, but what did you do? What impact did you have on that company? So the secret is crafting these bullets with what we call a silver bullet recipe, which is three different ingredients. Number one, it's what impact did you have on your employer? So an example would be uh, increased show up rates by 25% for the doctor's office. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What, what, what is the numbers behind that, right? So, okay, well, what did that mean for that doctor's office? And then you say, well, that increased revenue by $100,000 a year. Now we've put an impact with a measurable dollar amount or some kind of number there. And then the last one is really where you start, which is what keyword in the job posting that you're applying for is being matched up with this bullet. So did they say they wanted communication, you to have high communication skills? Be like, excelled in communication while working at XYZ doctor's office, increasing patient show up rate by 25% equaling $100,000 in increased revenue. That tells a story to Matt or me or any hiring manager that like, whoa, this person did something. There was an impact of hundred thousand dollars. I'm paying her sixty to come work for me to make me an extra hundred. This is a good deal, right? Like this is a good deal. So, to me, the biggest secret is crafting your bullets with the with the what we call the silver bullet recipe. Those three ingredients: a keyword, an impact that you have on a previous or current employer, and then um, the numbers to back it up. So that brings up a, a, actually an interesting question for me. And, and again, I mean, I think that that's like that that sort of that follows the whole point that you're, that you're making about having, telling a story, right? So you tell a story in the beginning, you tell a story in your bullet points on your resume. Totally. Um, but what if somebody doesn't have any claims experience? Can they still put together a really good resume that a hiring manager or a team manager or somebody's going to look at and say, I need to call this guy or gal? Uh, yeah, there, there's a few different things that you can do. But first off, I would say don't ever discount the experience you have professionally or even um, in a nonprofit or anything like that um, as not relating to insurance. Most likely, you have done something that has prepared you to be an adjuster of some kind. Um, and so when we interviewed 10 hiring managers, myself and John Bachman, uh, what we kept hearing was some of the best adjusters we ever had were people who worked at like places like Aaron's or Rent-A-Center. So the rental furniture places. And we're like, 
why like what 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 why why he's like well if i see that on a on a on a resume i'm gonna want to call him and we're like but no no why why (laughs) and they're like oh because well you see they deal with people who are not in a good way uh so usually you're renting furniture because something burned down you're financially in a hard place and you can't afford to outright buy furniture or you have bad credit so you can't get that two thousand dollar loan for that new couch you need whatever usually something negative has happened where you're just in a tough spot at that time in your life so being a salesperson to be able to relate to people like that to empathize with them to help them navigate through a tough situation as a part of their story when it comes up again the story of this person is huge and then as a bonus they know tons about contents matt tons about property contents now right yeah it's like i was like wait 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 i can't write down fast enough like slow down you guys are giving us way too much here so um i think that it doesn't matter what experience you have it's about realizing what did you do with that company what did you do well what was that impact and and how did that help prepare you for a job and adjusting and so there's a lot of things you could do there and uh, john bachman and i put together it's over 10 it's at least 10 i might be 11 or 12 different groupings of like, hey, here is customer service, how you can talk about your experience in customer service or retail or medical that helps prepare you for adjusting. The biggest thing that you're probably thinking right now as the adjuster watching is like, this is a lot of information. Like how do I take all these random tidbits and facts you're throwing at me and put it together in an actual plan to make my resume better? And so there is a template that, um, I've created along with John Bachman. uh, It's really a methodology of creating your resume because there's so many different ways you can create a resume. It gets kind of confusing um, in in reality because when I looked up how to create a great resume, I got 50 different responses. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. But when I talked to the hiring managers, all 10 of them said the same thing. They kept repeating the same things over and over. So we said, okay, that's what an adjuster, this is what people who hire adjusters are saying they need to be so here. Here's the route that we need to go. So the methodology is this, we call it the claim resume method. Um, And so that's an acronym or an acrostic for C, customize your resume to the job posting. If you're applying for a bodily injury job or as a cap property IA to an IA firm, look at what they're saying they need you to have. Are they saying they need you to know Symbility or Xactimate? Well, then you better talk about whichever one they're interested in, right? If you were only highlighting your executive experience and you happen to apply for a company who uses Symbility, it's not going to help you that much. Um, so look at what words they're using to then match it up to your experience. Like we did earlier with the doctor's office. I could have spun that in a bunch of different ways to communication, you know, to profitability, to, you know, avoiding loss or, uh, um, you know, there's so many different facets that it could apply to, but look at what keyword that they're using in the posting and then kind of match your, your impacts up to that, your bullet points up to those. So by customizing your resume for each job posting, it's going to make you match what they're looking for. And we haven't really talked about this, Matt, but the reason why matching is so important is when you submit your resume to that portal, that portal is dicing your resume up. So when you submit the pilot or whoever, assuming they use a portal, which I think most of them do, it dices your resume up into readable sections by a computer called the ATS or an applicant tracking system. And it says, hey, this guy's licensed in Texas, put him in the Texas category. This one knows exactly, put him exactly. If you're not using the keywords they're looking for, when they go back into the system, they're gonna type in license, you know, Texas adjuster um, with experience uh, in bodily injury or whatever. And if you don't have the words bodily injury or whatever keyword they're looking for, it's not gonna pull up your resume or you'll be way down on the list. It's like Google, when you type in shoes for sale in Stewart, Florida, right? You don't want Dallas shoes, you want shoes in Stewart, Florida. So it's the same way with these systems. You have to customize your resume to their posting. So that's number one, the C of the claim resume method. The A is about arranging your skills. Um, on your resume, you have, you know, you could say- The A. The, oh, I'm sorry, the L, I can't spell today. So the L, <laughs> so next is the L. It's a good uh, thing you, I can spell. That's good, <laughs> we should have it written on the whiteboard back there. Uh, so the L um, is link equals one page. Okay, so you could have a two page or a three page resume, but all 10, managers that we talked with said a perfect adjusted resume is one 
page. So there's no confusion. If you can't fit it on one page, you need to delete some stuff. And you really should be deleting things that aren't applicable or don't match up good to the job posting. Reference C, as before. He's right, he wrote it on the board for me. I appreciate that. Uh, and then, yeah, so next is the A about <laughs> arranging your skills. And what we mean by ranging is you're saying a lot of stuff on your resume, but the most important stuff um, is, it needs to be towards the top. So if they're, once again, going back to Xactimate, if they're looking for Xactimate, don't make that the last thing in your profile summary. Maybe make it the first. If they're saying they're looking for a licensed adjuster in New York, then put that first in your, your summary. But arrange everything to make sure that you're highlighting what's most important to this company. All right, then the I. Okay, you got to keep it clean by being intentional and consistent. So by being intentional and consistent, I'm talking about don't have a header that's a 16-point font, and then the next header is an 18-point font. If you italicize the company name on one, you better italicize the company name on all of them, right? So everything needs to be consistent in your resume so it looks clean. It's super important. We heard tons of hiring managers complain about inconsistent, and they call it sloppy resumes. So don't do that. Okay, and then M, um, you're going to have to go ahead and make it perfect. So once you get everything intentionally put onto one page, you've arranged all your skills, you went ahead and made the link to one page, and then you've customized it to the posting you're about to apply for, you got to go back and make sure there's nothing missing, no mistakes. Make sure that you have all your periods. Make sure there's no misspellings. Make sure there's no extra spaces. So you got to make it perfect. That's about editing your resume after you've tweaked it. So that's kind of the claim resume method. And if you stick to that framework, that's going to give you a good organization to your resume and make sure that um, you don't get spinning in 50 different directions. Because it doesn't have to be hard. It's just difficult if you don't know what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, I, I want, I, I want to talk about your book um, because I, I, having read it, I know that in these, in, in, in the book, you even tell what fonts to use, what point size, I mean, like for every part of the whole thing. So um, tell us about the new book, um, the resume, the adjuster's resume playbook, you know, how you wrote it um, and how it can help people um, really anybody, I think, craft a better resume yeah. is going to get them noticed by the right people like quickly. Yeah. So five months ago, uh, during coronavirus, uh, you know, I had the lockdown, right? I don't even know what's going to be called in the, the long term, but that month or two where it was like the country shut down. Well, what happened was the claims sucked up into the carriers and a lot of independent adjusters were not getting work or appraisers were not getting work that they were used to getting. The carriers, and it's still kind of going on some, started handling things virtually a lot more than they were previously, but having owners send their claims in with photos and not ever sending anybody out. So all of a sudden, a lot of our students that we mentor at IPATH weren't getting as much work. And I'm like, where does this go from here? Uh, um, and so I started looking around and there was still like 9,000 jobs at insurance companies being posted on Indeed. And I'm like, what? 9,000 jobs and, you know, some of our best people can't even get enough work to stay busy during this. And I was like, that's weird. What if this whole thing shakes up the entire industry? So I reached out to John Bach and I said, John, I know we've talked about it kind of before, but is there a way that we can help people learn how to become a staff adjuster at an insurance company if this IA thing isn't working out for them or if they just need more stability in their life or if they never wanted to be a business owner at all and they just, they need a job right? Being an adjuster is awesome. And I think things are shifting and we need to be able to be prepared to help people shift. He's like, dude, that sounds awesome. We can do it the same way you've done the, the IA playbook and all your mentorship. It's the same concepts, but we got to figure out what makes somebody stand out to a carrier. So we went and interviewed these 10 hiring managers. I wish I could say the names at the insurance companies they work for. They were major people. Okay. And they were awesome for giving us their time, but legally we just couldn't use the insurance carrier's name but they told us exactly what you need to do to get hired at an insurance company and what a resume needed to look like so then kind of cross reference that with ia firms and you're getting the same answers and all of a sudden you realize there's a way you're supposed to do your resume there's a right. way you're supposed to do this and so it became a kind of a spin-off project like okay we can't put everything about how to get hired at an insurance company 
and everything about how to create a resume all in one book. And independents need this book just as well as corporate uh, adjusters do, people who want to work at a company. So independents have, we have no idea. I had no idea. So what I learned, I was like, I, we got to share this in a separate book, John. And so we, we created this book. And uh, it took us about five months to, com to complete it totally. <laughs> Long interview and research process. Wow. Well, no, that's great. I mean, it's like it's what I always try to say on, on Adjuster TV, it's like not just my opinion. Like I can sit here and say, hey, this is how I think you should write a resume. Uh, but, uh, you know, interviewing not just one person, but 10 people and really getting feedback from the, the whole industry as a whole, they'll tell you exactly what they want to, how they want you to present the, the resume, how do you present, your, present yourself, what to say on it, what they need you to say. Right. And it's not that you're yep. just like going to say that because that's what you think they want them to say, but it's got to be true, obviously. Right. But like, like we were just talking about it, even if it's, even if you don't have any claims experience, there's a lot of, there's a lot of carryover experience from other industries that works great in claims. In fact, I think a lot of adjusters probably could benefit from working at a furniture rental store or totally. being a bartender or doing all these other kinds of jobs where you're interacting with people and you're having to, create a customer experience because that's a huge part of our job. Yeah. And we talked to them because we have an upcoming book in a month, another one, the one about how to get a job in insurance care. But we talked to them about these hiring managers about, well, well what if someone doesn't have experience? Can they still get a job at an insurance company? You know, and the things that we tell them that uh, independence to stand out for companies, you know, the big IA firms and, and to show that you're committed to this industry is the same, a lot of the same things for them. It's like, you know, do you have an adjuster's license? Whoa, that's impressive. You got your adjuster's license. Good start, right? Do you have any training? You know, so if you're sitting there going, my resume doesn't look very impressive, even after I do all this stuff, Chris, well, go get a little bit of industry training. Go get some licenses. Go get more licenses, right? Go get some certifications or designations. And I, I think that most people overcomplicate this process just because they don't know. It's not complicated. It's just you don't know what you don't know. Like I didn't know right. what I didn't know. And then once they told me and I wrote it out, I'm like, it just really isn't hard. It's just, this is, this is how you do it. Okay. Well now we know how to do it. Let's let other people know this is how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited for people to get their hands on this book. And again, I mean, it's, it's called the adjuster's resume playbook, but I think that anything in here could really carry over to a, a whole different a lot of different industries and especially related stuff and even maybe even unrelated stuff. It's just good general knowledge about, you know, say you, you don't want to climb roofs anymore. You don't want to do claims anymore. You want to do something else. I think this book absolutely can help you. So where can we find it? All right. Well, you head to iapath.com slash resume book, or you can head to Amazon at the link on our website. It'll take you to Amazon. Uh, it'll be available uh, on audible here later this week, but right now it's available on Kindle and paperback. And this first week it's out uh, where we've discounted 50% because we want people who watch adjuster TV, who listen to iapath, who are a part of what we're already doing to have a chance to grab it at like a very low cost. So it's a $5 for the ebook and 10 bucks for the paperback. Well, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on and, and telling me, telling us about this, this new, uh, this great new resource that you guys have put together. Absolutely. And guys, hopefully this was helpful, even if you never get the book, but trust me, get the book. We literally write the resume right there with you. All right, Matt. Thanks for your time, man. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself, Chris Stanley, Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School and others show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who will let you shadow them, which is why we let you ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at AdjusterTVPlus.com. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date, and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims, a career where you can help people in a time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.